Hi everyone, welcome back to the next installment in our series here of video tutorials around an introduction to the IDF to pH tools. Uh, I'm going to pick up right where we left off in our last video where we were starting to discuss uh, how to manage, how to properly manage uh, glass and, and, and window frames in our construction uh, uh, project here. And we, we, we saw that we can add windows using the, the typical Honeybee process. Uh, that's great. That works, that works fine. Th those windows flow through into our PHPP model just fine. Um, and we were just starting to, to say that we would like to uh, uh, gain some control over the, the parameter and specification assignment for our, for our windows. So um, we'll, I'll show a couple different ways to do that here using some of the new IDF to PH tools. Uh, and we'll talk about the different um, sort of pluses and minuses to those We'll, we'll demonstrate a couple different ways to do that and, and see how that affects our, our overall performance in our, our PHPP model there. Um, one way or another, though, I want to gain control over my perimeter assignment. I want to be able to say this window is using or has this type of glass, and this other window has this type of glass and this type of frame. I want to be able to control things like Psi install. Uh, the, the installation psi value for the windows. Um, all of these types of things I want to be able to feed into to my project overall here. So um, if you remember in the last video there, we were starting to add windows just after we created our, our honeybee zone. So we created, we used our, our opaque surfaces to create our honeybee zone, and then we added some windows to that zone. Uh, I set it up here on a pipeline so that we can add as many windows as we want, and we can sort of change that assignment at any time. So uh, for instance, we have our windows here, or excuse me, if we go to our windows worksheet, we have our windows here uh, in our, our worksheet. Um, and because this is a pipeline, if, for instance, I grab this and I you know, change the size of this dramatically, notice here the, the size is going to automatically change. Um, and then if I you know, do something like add another window, if I sort of uh, oops, if I just make a, another, another window, make a copy of the window, notice I get uh, another, another window showing up here in my project. So, uh, you know, the pipeline method allows us to, you know, really flexibly and easily sort of manipulate the geometry and the scene there and have it flow through into our into our Rhino model, or, or excuse me, into our PHPP model really, really easily. So, um, so that's all working. That's all connected. You can see the, the data flowing through as I make those those manipulations there. Um, what, 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 as I said, what I really want to spend this uh, video dwelling on, though, is the parameter assignment and, and uh, adjusting the specifications uh, for the glazing, because that's going to be such an important piece of the, the, the puzzle here. So, okay, so a couple things. How are we going to manage that information? Where are we going to manage that information? And how are we going to get that uh, into, into our model here? Well, just like with opaque assemblies, my preference in most of our projects is actually to manage the information back on the Rhino side, so back in the Rhino model. Now, as with the opaque assemblies, this is something of personal preference. It's sort of whatever you, you know, ho however you like to work, whatever works best for your projects. But I can definitely say that for most of our work, the most effective, the easiest way for me to manage this information, keep track of this information, is to do it in the Rhino model. And what I like most about that is that when I have a question, so six months later, when I come back to a project, if I want to know what glass is assigned to this window, I click on the window, and it can tell me what glass is assigned to the window. So if I go into the object uh, uh, parameters, this is where I'll be able to find that information. Now, we don't have that information yet. So, so nowhere here does it say this is a window. This doesn't know anything about windows. This just knows that it's a surface. Um, but we will see that we can host all sorts of useful information in the object's user attribute text, or excuse me, attribute user text. So um, as with the opaque assemblies, the attribute user text is uh, just a simple key value dictionary, and we can add some really useful information, which is going to get hosted on the Rhino object. It's going to live with the Rhino object for the, life of the, for the life of the project, and I can always go back and access that information or modify or update that information at, at any point. So I like that interface. That works really well. And so that's what we'll show here. But again, there's lots of different ways you could, you could choose to do this. We'll, we'll show some different methods. So let's say, for instance, though, that I have this window. And I do want to manage the data in the Rhino side. Well, let's start with the simplest data. What's the simplest data point that I could uh, desire to, to pass through? Well, let's say the name. Let's say that when I look at this, it makes me very unhappy. 
this is terrible. This is not a good name. I mean, I get it. It's a, you know, we, we haven't given it a name, so it's doing, it's doing good work to put a nice random name on there, um, but we want control over this. So let's put a name here. Let's call this um, South, and let's call this South 2, and let's call this one South 1. So we just gave names to these, and if we look down here in our PHPP, uh, nothing has changed. So just like with the opaque assemblies, out of the box, these honeybee components do not, try and pull this over, do not get information from the rhino scene. Uh, they expect all the information to be input in the grasshopper side. So, okay, so fine. So I could input this here. I could say south one, let's make that a panel, and I'll make it a multi-line, and I'll say south one, south, if I can type south two, and I'll input that into the child surfaces name, and there we go, south one, south two. Well, wait, that can't be right. South one is seven meters wide, so south one is this one, but I had said that that one was south two, so one, two, three, you know, counting left to right. Well, that's because the order that the geometry comes in is not really known to us. We, we don't really have access to that information in this configuration, right? So the, the, the um, names just get assigned in whatever order the geometry comes in. So this is, um, you know, not not ideal. Now now we could you know make multiple versions of this whole thing. So we can make like a you know we can make a second one and we could sort of um, choose this one and say um, put this guy here and say oops, that guy and put that one in there and then do this one. Oops. Let me make sure this is working properly. Before we go any further here, formula manual. There we go. Uh, you can see this is kind of getting weirded out because I gave it two names, but only one B rep. Uh, so let's change that, and then we'll do that one there. And so now this is coming through properly. Um, so this actually updates. So taking a second here. There we go. Uh, so we, we could do it that way. We could sort of you know do it one element at a time. Rather than using our using our pipelines here, we could sort of do do one element at a time. Um, but I don't like it that way. What I would rather do is uh, is manage all of this information back in the back in the Rhino scene. I think it's easier to manage this information back in the back in the Rhino scene. So let me let me reset this, uh, get us hooked back up here so that we're working properly. Get rid of that. Um, so I have two surfaces coming in, but only one name. So it's um, unhappy with me there. And uh, so let me get rid of that. And let's go back to let's go back to where we were. All right. So fine. So we just have surfaces coming in. They have um, sort of ugly names. I have named them in my Rhino scene. So if I go to the surface parameters, I, I do have names there, but somehow I want to pull that information into the Rhino, uh, grasshopper scene. So just like with the opaque surfaces, we can do that using a new uh, uh, building type um, IDF to pH component. So we saw before that we could use this get surface params component to pull information from the Rhino scene. And we can do kind of the same thing with Windows. So we have this create PHPP window, and this is going to pull information from the Rhino scene. And we're going to use this inline before the Honeybee add glazing component. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this onto the canvas here. I'm going to move this guy over, move this guy here. And this component is going to live right in line. So it's going to live right in front of the honeybee add glazing component. And notice how, the, how this is set up. Um, I'm going to take in a honeybee zone, and I'm going to output a honeybee zone. So I'm going to be doing some modification to the honeybee zone in this component. I'm also going to take in some window geometry. So down on the bottom here, we're going to input some window geometry, and we're going to output some window geometry. So we're going to take in some geometry in the zone, and we're going to output the zone and the geometry after we perform some modifications. So I input, and I'm going to pass through my honeybee zone to the uh, uh, create glazing tool. And then I'm going to hook up surfaces to surfaces, names to names, and constructions to constructions. So these guys are just going to flow right through. 
And notice as soon as we do that, now the information about the geometry is flowing through correctly. So south 1 is now the small window, and south 2 is now the big wide window. So the right name is going to the right uh, geometry uh, based on how it's been assigned back in the Rhino scene. So for this to work, this is all I need to do. These guys are going to form something of a, a sort of pair. So this is a sort of coupling, again, very similar to the way we did with our opaque assemblies over here. Right? We drop in the new IDF to pH component ahead of the existing honeybee component, and we do the same thing here for our glazing side. So this is now working. We now have um, the ability to read information out of our out of our, our rhino scene. But um, we haven't applied any information to our rhino scene, and so we're still just getting default assemblies. So in this case, we have default glass and default window frames being applied because we have not actually um, input any, any information here. But notice that we do have a difference here. We have glass being assigned, assigned to glass and frames being assigned to frames. So the, unlike the IDF uh, default, uh, instead of a single construction being applied to both, here we're actually going to have a glass construction and then a frame construction, and we're going to apply them separately to those uh, different elements. And this is going to give us a more detailed, a more accurate assessment of the UW value for each window. So OK, so we have our windows operating. We have our windows in the scene. We have the right, um, the right sizes. They're named the right thing. And we have some default materials being assigned. Let's say that I want to change the window glazing specification, though. So how can I change the glass? How can I update the glass? Well, I can do that in a couple different ways. First of all, I could come in here and notice that I have an input for glazings. So I could actually input a glazing object directly onto this, um, this PHPP window uh, builder. So if I come up here to 01 model, and I go to, this is in the IDF to pH rollout, and I um, choose window glazing, so create PHPP window glazing, and drop that onto the canvas here. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room. I actually have the ability to create glazing right here in the grasshopper scene. So this is kind of similar to how we might uh, do this if we were going to work with native honeybee tools. If we wanted to build um, you know, uh, typical Energy Plus constructions, um, we can sort of build our materials right here in the scene itself. So let's do that real quick. Let's call this a grasshopper glass. So we'll call this grasshopper glass. And let's give it a, give it a, whoops, give it a U value. Stop it. A U value of, I don't know, let's say 0.7. Kind of moderately good passive house style glass. Uh, and 0.4 if we're working in a place like New York. So now, whoops, there we go. So now we have our glazing object. There we go. So now we have a PHPP style glazing object with a U value for the glazing, that's center of glass, so that's a center of glass U value, and a G value, or a uh, SHGC value. And again, center of glass. Notice in the tooltip here, um, it, it, it uh, specifies uh, this is uh, tested as per EN410. So the, the G value or the SHGC value um, as per EN410 and the U value as per uh, EN673. If you hover over, you see. So EN673 for the, the U value. So the, the, sp the proper specification, the proper testing protocol for the, for the glazing is important. So you're going to get your data sheet from your glazing supplier. They're going to give you this information. It'll feed in. Well, what do I do with this now? So I have this glazing object. Where does it go? Well, I'm just going to connect the glazing object to the glazing input. And as soon as I do that, back in my PHPP, notice here's my grasshopper glass. We open up our PHPP. If I now go to the components worksheet, and I scroll over in the components worksheet, notice there's my grasshopper glass. Go over a little bit. Let me reformat this so it's a little easier to see. There's my grasshopper glass with a G value, or SHGC, of 0.4, and a U value of 0.7, so kind of moderate glass. So this has now been pushed through. If we take a look at our frame, we have not updated anything to do with the frame. The only thing we've updated is the glass itself. So those were all center of glass values. The frame is entered over here as yet a whole separate component. So notice the frame still has a pretty bad U value for all the UF, the, the, the U value of the frame. So the only thing we've changed is the UG, the value of the glazing itself. 
Now we could of course manage the value of the frame as well. So in the same way that we have these glazing uh, builders, we have a little frame builder as well. So you can actually create a PHPP window frame in much the same way where you'd be expected to input U values for the frame, widths for the frame, glazing psi values, uh, psi install values, and then the frame would get um, connected here to the frames input. So we could absolutely do that in our grasshopper scene if we wanted to. But just as like, or just as with our opaque surfaces, I actually prefer to do all of this uh, parameter assignment and management back in the Rhino scene rather than here in our grasshopper scene. So let me delete this out of our grasshopper scene. Move these guys back over. And you'll notice uh, back in our PHPP, notice we went back to the default glass. So as soon as I removed that custom parameter assignment, we fall back to the default. Right, so that's a, so that's just as we would want it to be. And now we want to look at how can we manage this information back in our, our Rhino scene. So rather than in the Grasshopper scene, how do we manage it in the Rhino scene? So let me pull the Grasshopper over. Let me readjust my windows here a little bit so that we can see things a little better. So back in our Rhino scene, we have our window objects. And what I would like to do is click on the object and assign some window parameters. Right, and I want to I want to add them to the attribute user text dictionary here. So we can do that using the new set window properties tool, which is uh, part of the PHPP uh, toolbar here. So we've already seen how we can use our, our um, set room data component. We've seen how we can use our set uh, surface parameter uh, um, component. And now we have this set window properties component. So if I click on this window, we get a little dialog window here that pops up and it allows us to set some information for the selected window or windows. So for instance, we can set the type of frame that we want to use. Now, what is this list? Where are all these frames coming from? What are all these frames? Let's cancel out of this for a second. Well, if you remember when we were working with our opaque components, we used this set components library tool. So this set components library tool, oops, there we go. Set component libraries tool was used to import all of these construction assemblies, but at the same time that we imported the construction assemblies, it also brought in a bunch of glazing and a bunch of frames. So we brought in a bunch of those default frames and a bunch of the default glazing um, that were that were present in our PHPP. If I adjust this a little bit. Notice we've got some passive house frames of average thermal quality with UVAL or with uh, widths with U values, with Psi values, etc. So we've got a whole bunch of frames already in our project, and we've got a whole bunch of glazings already in our project. Now, you can always go through and you can remove these. Um, you can sort of clean this up. We could we could have cleaned up our um, Excel library before we imported it. You know, if, if you if you want to clean up and manage this data, there's there's plenty of ways uh, to do that. But this that's where all this information came from. So let's go back to our window assigner. Our window, um, our set window properties rollout, and let's set one of these. Let's set the frame that we want. So let's find a good frame. What's a good frame? Let's use. Da, 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 da. Let's use. Here we go. How about passive house frames with good thermal quality? So well, let's assign that frame to this window, and let's set the glazing as well. Let's set it to. I don't know. Oh, let's set it to triple glazing. Triple glazing, 410, 4, 4, 10, 4, 4. That's not very good, triple glazing. It's 10 millimeter air gap with, um, a, a, with air filled. So, you know, that's not, that's not um, super high quality triple glazing, but it's still triple glazing. So let's, let's, uh, let's assign the triple glazing and let's see how it does. Let's see what kind of properties we get there. We could also at this point assign a variant type. Um, we won't go over that yet, but maybe in future videos we'll talk about how we can use the variance worksheet to... Um, um, to control, um, we can test lots of different options, lots of different variants. So we can um, t uh, assign the variant type here. We can also assign the psi, psi install type if we have a catalog of psi installs. Um, if not, then it'll just use the psi install from the frame. That's fine. And then, of course, we can set the installation edges. This for, um, you know, if you have mold windows, windows which are mold together, you would um, you turn these on and off as, as appropriate. So we'll say OK. And notice now that in my surface, so I have this surface selected, and I'm looking at the attribute user text, notice a bunch of information 
just got added to this attribute user text. Installations and glazing types and frame types and um, object name, all sorts of stuff got added by default here. So if I now um, force an update to this component, instead of using the default elements, notice that this guy is now going to use triple glazing, 410, 410, 4, and passive house frames, good thermal quality. If we open up our PHPP, let me zoom in a little bit here. So notice that these guys are now getting the correct parameter assignment as per our, our Rhino model. If we go back over to the components worksheet, notice that those components that are used, triple glazing, air 10.4, 10.4, and passive house frames, good thermal quality, have all been added to the components worksheet. So all of the actually used components get added automatically to the components worksheet, and they get assigned correctly in the Windows uh, rollout here. Right, so we can absolutely manage all of this information back in our, our Rhino scene tool. So notice here, we've got our triple glazing, a G value of 0.7, and a UG of 2. Ugh, do not use that glass, goodness, uh, at least not in New York. So that's not very good. That's wrong. Uh, we would not want to do any of that. So let's change our glazing specification. Um, let's use a, a more New York appropriate glass. I'm, I'm in New York, so I keep talking about New York. Um, that's where we practice, and so that's the climate I'm most familiar with. So let's use a type of window or a type of glass that um, we might be appropriate for, for a place like, like New York where we work. So I'm going to go to my library, and I'm actually going to create a new type of glazing. So I'm going to add a new glazing element, and I'm going to call this Ed's New York City Appropriate Glazing. Now, you know, maybe in reality you call it, um, you know, a uh, single bane, um, you know, 418, uh, 418 AR4, right? Uh, you know, a a four millimeter, 18 millimeter argon fill, you know, something like that. Maybe you have a, an actual spec, but we don't. We're just testing things out. So I'm going to call this as New York City um, appropriate glazing. And again, this is just center of glass values. So let's say maybe 0.6, let's be aggressive, let's say 0.5 for a U value. And a SHGC or a G value of 0.4 would be much more appropriate for a climate like New York City, where we worry so much about overheating risk in the um, uh, shoulder seasons, in particular September, October. Uh, so 0.4 uh, uh, SHGC or, or center of glass, that's again center of glass as per um, EN410 testing. Um, so that would be much more appropriate. So let's we added that, so that's added. I'll say OK. So then I'll go to my click on my window and I'll go back to set window properties. And I'll update the parameter assignment here. I'm going to change it from the uh, sort of not very good triple glazing to Ed's New York City appropriate glazing. And I'll say OK. And then if I force a refresh here by pushing through, notice that um, my bad triple glazing gets replaced by my appropriate triple glazing with a better, more appropriate G value, or SHGC, and a better, uh, much, much lower UG value. So this is exactly the type of glass that we um, would like to see on high performance projects in a climate like New York, for instance. Uh, and if we go to our windows, notice that my appropriate glazing has been applied only to my first window, only to window number one. Right? That's the only window that I've applied this glazing to. If I was to come in here, grab this other window, do a similar assignment. So I say, uh, what did we say? Opacive house with good thermal quality and Ed's appropriate glazing, variant type for now. Just leave it A. You could leave it blank. It doesn't really matter um, at this point. And say, OK. If we force a refresh, and there we go. Ed's New York City appropriate glazing flows through into our PHPP. So we are managing all of our specifications and, and parameters back in the Rhino side. So I don't have a ton of panels floating around in my Grasshopper tool here, and I can very easily see this data at any time. So I can click on this. I can either look in the attribute dictionary over here, or I can go right to my uh, set window properties tool. And if it already has some uh, materials applied, those will be the ones that show up in the tool here. So I can easily see that this has my appropriate glazing uh, applied to it already. Right, so it's, a, it's just an easier way for the types of projects we work on to manage this data. I like to be able to 
point or touch the thing and just see what's up, applied to it rather than sort of hunting around in a, a sort of table somewhere. But again, a lot of it is just a personal preference. However you like to work with it, however you sort of choose to, to work with the tools, they're flexible enough to accommodate all sorts of different uh, methods. Um, and then just lastly, this video is getting a little long, but um, lastly, the only other thing I'll say is you can always ignore all of what I just told you and just apply an Energy Plus construction instead. So if you want to use the typical Honeybee or Energy Plus builder, so if you want to just build a uh, you know an Energy Plus construction with an Energy Plus window material, you know a simple uh, uh, UW uh, window material, that's totally fine. You can just add that to the uh, add that as an Energy Plus construction here. Right. So that's totally fine as well. So again, lots of different ways that you could choose to work with uh, these tools. They accommodate lots of different workflows, um, uh, hopefully flexible enough for, for all sorts of different types. So I think we will leave that here. I think we've um, um, said all we need to say at this point about Windows, um, or at least window specifications. I think um, we'll come back in the next video and um, take a look at uh, a one method for calculating window shading. Um, the, the other, obviously, the other really important piece about Windows um, is, or, or one of the very important pieces about Windows, is that they are going to have solar gain and um, they uh, have the potential for causing overheating. And so we want to be really careful and, and um, uh, thoughtful about how we shade our windows. And so we will look at window shading in the, in the next video. So we'll, we'll take, or we'll look at one method of, of window shading. There's lots of different methods that we can use. We'll show one simplified method uh, and how that flows into our, our PHPP. So we'll take a look at that in the next one. Um, thanks, for, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you back for the, the next video.